Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we want to give an update about the historic rain in the period of the last few hours. Um, city departments are working together to keep people safe and clear of water. Um, forecasts currently say that we should be seeing an additional inch of rain. And while we hope the worst is behind us, behind us, we want to keep the public informed. Second, highways are mostly clear. Avoid the highways if you can. That's critical there with this, this rain. All bridges over River De Pere are currently open. Um, parts of Highway 70, I believe, are all open as well. Um, but they may be closed again due to additional rainfall. Once again, it's critical that we keep you all safe. Um, please be aware of that and stay out of these areas until they are, uh, we give you the notification that they're clear again. Um, we have had our, our customer service reps receive a number of calls. If you see storm damage, please don't hesitate to call 314-622-4800. Once again, that's 314-622-4800. And that's a non-emergency line. Down power lines should be avoided and reported to Ameren uh, immediately. And at this time, I'll pass it over to uh, SEMA. Yeah, that would be helpful. Uh, my name is Heather Taylor. It's H-E-A-T-H-E-R. Last name is Taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-R, and I'm the Deputy Public Safety Director. Thank you. My name is Sarah Russell, S-A-R-A-H-R-U-S-S-E-L-L. -S -S -E I'm the Commissioner of the City Emergency Management Agency. Um, I would like to um, speak to those who have been impacted by the floods this morning. Um, as you woke up and were affected by this flood, many of you did evacuate your homes. Um, there is a temporary um, regional evacuation center that has been set up at 8001 Hale Avenue in Richmond Heights. This is a regional facility that is being staffed um, and supplies are being provided by the Red Cross. Um, we are partnering with St. Louis County to offer a joint shelter at that facility. There will be um, water, snacks, and blankets provided for anyone who needs to seek shelter there. Um, they are, I've been told, also accepting pets at this time. A number of residents this morning did have their pets with them when they evacuated, so we want to make sure that that information is passed along as well. Um, there are additional sites set up locally throughout uh, the St. Louis area. So if you are in another impacted area outside of the city, um, I would encourage you to call 1-800-RED-CROSS to locate a shelter nearest to you for assistance. If you are cleaning up your home, um, if you later will re-enter and begin to clean up your home, we do want you to be safe when you do that. There are a number of hazards that will and can be waiting for you there. Um, things that you have in your house, household chemicals and other hazards that may have been moved by the, the flood waters. Make sure that you're using personal protective equipment, rubber gloves, boots, um, anything you can to protect yourself and make sure the area around your home is safe before you're re-entering that. Um, in addition, I want to mention um, our street department, um, the Hampton facility did um, have some flood issues today. Um, they are in the process of pumping out their offices at Hampton currently. Um, there are alternate sites that they are utilizing to do work and receive calls for services. Um, and this is not the area where our refuse trucks or our site are, are housed or maintained. So that should be unaffected um, at this time, but they are continuing to do work um, even though they have been displaced from their office. Um, at this time, I will hand it over to uh, Chief Sack. Good morning. I'm Chief Mike Sack, uh, last name spelled S-A-C-K. Uh, thank you for being here this morning. Uh, the police department, uh, as the fire department, are frequently the first responders in incidents such as this. Uh, we were responsible for identifying and blocking some of the low-lying road areas to prevent persons from driving into those locations. We'd encourage everyone to not drive into standing water. 
You don't know how deep it is. You don't know how your vehicle is going to respond. It's simply not safe. It's not worth the risk. So we'd encourage people to drive around those locations. Uh, we do have uh, some locations that are still uh, experiencing some issues with water. Lansdowne and Chippewa along River to Pear, Enright and Skinker and Rosedale. The 1100 block of Hodemont and southbound Vanaventer at Ikea. Uh, these are just some of the locations where we're experiencing high water. Again, we'd encourage anyone to, if they see it, to stay out of that. Uh, we're working with uh, City Tow to arrange for vehicles, uh, once the water subsides, to remove those vehicles from the roadways so that those roads are completely open to the public. I'd like to pass it over to Chief Jenkerson. Good morning, everyone. I'm Fire Chief Dennis Jenkerson, J-E-N-K-E-R-S-O-N. St. Louis Fire Department started bright and early this morning, right around 3 o'clock. We had a significant call at the main post office downtown uh, at 1420 Market. We had an electrical issue in the second sub-basement that was caused from the rain, and, so, and the water was coming up, so we had a significant amount of smoke in that building. That, that started our morning. Uh, then we went on to about 70 different rescues slash assist of civilians in the area. Um, I, I can't stress enough, as Chief Sack also mentioned, don't drive into standing water. You know, as you drive in, it, it, may, it may look low, but once you get to the center or, or the bottom of the crest, you're in five, six, seven, eight foot of water. So we've had a tremendous amount of cars that have been door deep and also roof deep in some of these low-lying areas. Uh, it has receded a little bit. Now we're seeing the weight of the water cause some uh, issues with buildings. We're having some partial roof collapse. Some of the vacant buildings are also suffering from the stress of this water. Uh, there was a significant area over around Macklin, uh, I'm sorry, McCausland and Southwest where we had right around 14 to 15 homes that, that suffered significant flooding. So this has been a storm that came on very quickly. Uh, it has been handled well by the first responders of the city of St. Louis. So, but like I said before, don't drive into standing water. We're trying to block as many streets as we can where we know we have this, this low-lying water. It is receding, but still, pay attention. Uh, pay attention to the lights that are responding. Pay attention to the lights that are blocking the streets. And so you're going to have to give us a little bit of help until all this water recedes. Thank you. Do you want to mention your recovery? Uh, the recovery of the I, I have to wait right now. I'll hold on there. Okay. We had an earlier call right around 10 o'clock as the water was receding. We had an area over around uh, uh, Skinker and Enright in Rosedale where we had approximately eight and a half foot of water uh, that had developed in a low-lying area. And we were told by a civilian that there was a possibility of somebody in a car. As the water was receding, the car made itself visible as the water receded. And we have pulled a, uh, a civilian out of a vehicle that has passed. So we do have one fatality from this fast rising water. So uh, we're still investigating that scene right now. Police, fire, EMS, and a coroner are on the scene looking at this incident. So that just occurred, like I said, right around 1030. Did the civilian who reported that have any information about how that happened? You know, we don't know right now. We don't know if the individual drove into the water uh, after some emergency calls in and around the area. We don't know yet. We're looking at like I said, it's under investigation right now. And we'll give an update on that. We have to do the notification the next again. You know, someone's lost their life, so it's critical that we get that um, done with the family. Um, that's always important. Uh, and we'll be able to have PD send out uh, information on that once we have it officially. It is uh, being investigated right now as a suspicious death. There's a complaint number that's been drawn on it, but we want to notify the family. It's critical that we get that. First. Chief, you've been serving the city for a long time. When's the last time you've seen flooding like this in the city of St. Louis? You know, we had a significant amount of rainfall, uh, I'll say 10 to 11 years ago, where it came on fast. I think we had about four and a half to five inches of rain over about an hour and a half period. The same area over there around uh, McCausland in Southwest, we had an issue there again back then. So um, I've seen several of these over my career. It's just the water rises quickly. Uh, we were looking at River de Pair this morning. Uh, River de Pair is starting to empty very quickly because the Mississippi is down as well. So uh, the one thing that helped us here is the uh, level of the Mississippi River was very low because of the long stretch without rain. So 
this water is going to leave very quickly, but it, it's, it, it's still very dangerous as it's leaving. I think this was a shock to a lot of people this morning. Was there any way to prepare for the type of flooding that we're seeing across the city? You know, I think we were prepared for it as far as from the first responders part of it. You know, the police and fire, we always worked together with that. The, um, we had our boats ready. We had all of the motors were gassed up. Uh, we, we had the trailers ready to go, so we responded as we were called. So it, I can't say it was a shock to us. It's, it's you know, the, the amount of uh, water that got trapped uh, because of block sores, whether it was from trash or grass or mulch or whatever, you know, it's, it's, it's always an issue, but it leaves as fast as it comes up. I don't think we have a complete number yet. Uh, we do know that there have been people displaced, and as the commissioner gave, she gave the location um, on Richmond Heights. That's the Nash, the local location for shelter for for everyone, and you know, information about your pets and making sure you keep your pets safe too. Can you address? Um Well, when you're driving into the uh, the areas that are covered with water, you have to remember that there's um, there's drop-offs, there's sores underneath the water that you can't see now because they're all covered with water. Many times the sore lids have been lifted off from the pressure of the water, so there's there's, there, there's areas that you're going to trip, fall, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of people who drive into these can't help themselves get out of there. So the firefighters have to go in and try and assist them out. Now we do have life jackets, we had, we do have small boats, uh, we have sounding tools, if you will, to help our help us get out of it. But it, it's always dangerous because you don't know if we have down wires inside this water. It, there's a whole uh, myriad of issues that, that come about because we've got electrical street lights that are in, in the water. So it, it's, it does cause us an issue and it has to be approached very carefully by the fire department to get these people out. And then we run into people who, went, while we're trying to evacuate them, say out of a, a home that's flooded, they don't want to leave. We had a couple this morning that didn't want to leave, so we had to come back about an hour later because now they were trapped in their attic. So it, it, it becomes an issue for the fire department. So it, it's just, you have to heed the warning of the first responders who have been through this type of incident before and evacuate when we tell you to evacuate. No, I, I know the city would be ready for it. You know, the River to Pear empties fairly quickly. It was almost bone dry two, three days ago. So all it's doing now is taking the water that's coming out of the neighborhoods in the city and moving it down the river. So it's as fast as it comes up, it's going back down. It's not like it's being restricted by the Mississippi. No, no, we're ready. Three tough questions. Um, property damage, I think, are very significant. You know, if you look at the um, the area, like I mentioned, over around McCaws in the southwest, um, we've got 13, 14, 15 homes over there that, that are in pretty bad shape. Uh, injuries, we really haven't seen too many injuries, uh, maybe some cuts, scratch, and bruises. Uh, so I don't think that's that big an issue. We haven't really transported many people with EMS away from these sites. Um, it's it, it just the amount of uh, material things that these people have lost, you know, within their homes. And, and, and the same way they're all displaced right now, they're trying to find either a relative or some place to go to, you know, to spend the rest of the afternoon and maybe the next couple, next couple weeks, excuse me. Correct. That's the only one we know of. Whether it be in a car, in a home, what's that been like for you and police to deal with the last you know, 12 hours? No, 
I'll, I'll, I guess I'll speak to it. You want to yeah. do that? So I think it's, you know, uh, there, there, are nine, there are nine emergency numbers as well. That's why we're trying to get this information out uh, for the nine emergency numbers. Um, as always, you know, our dispatchers are working overtime, our police officers, our firemen, our SEMA, everyone's working overtime to handle um, this, this emergency. Uh, I think we, from the start, we, we formed a uh, centralized location, a command center. We've been, come together and we've discussed it. Um, I believe we were prepared for it. Uh, and I believe we'll be prepared tonight. Um, when there is an emergency, people are urged to call 911. If you feel like your life is in danger, you should call 911. However, for other things that are not emergencies, a car unoccupied that's flooded, you know, we need to utilize non-emergency numbers for that. Um, Yes, pretty much what we can say about that. All right, yeah. uh, about one or two more. Can you guys talk about the impact that this has had on uh, Metro service this morning? I know we've seen a lot of really impactful photos of the. So we'll, it, it, we do know that uh, the Metrolink from Illinois stops at Grand right now, and it turns around and goes back. So it has had an impact, but Metro will provide further on that. They would be the experts to provide further on what they're doing to fix that and address that for anyone that's commuting using Metro. There are also some photos of the Metro bus um, submersion water. Do you know if anybody was on that at the time or any passengers were evacuated? We don't have any reported um, deaths or injuries from that right now. Hi, uh, Sean Hadley, um, S-E-A-N-H-A-D-L-E-Y, uh, Manager of Public Affairs for MSD. So we've, um, we're, throughout the region right now, we've got over 250 plus calls that we're running. Um, what we're seeing is um, it's just, it's not in one specific area, it's actually um, all the way throughout the entire St. Louis region, through St. Louis City and St. Louis County. Um, we haven't seen any big major impacts on our sewer system, it's actually holding up and um, everything's been, everything's been maintained like it's supposed to. So we've already been, we do this, we do this every day. So we've, uh, we've already been out um, hitting all the hot spot areas. Actually, um, we, we have crews, um, we're moving crews from our South County area because we're seeing a lot of, we're seeing a lot of issues in North County right now. So we've, we've moved a lot of crews from South to North just to kind of help assist there. Within the city of St. Louis itself, we're only seeing, we've, we've got about probably 60 plus uh, calls that we're running right now. Um, so and a lot of it's, a lot of it's coming in. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of our, our call center is inundated. A lot of it's, um, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to move crews around to get get them in the hot spot areas. But as far as the low lying areas that we've seen, we we pretty much have taken care of that, and we haven't seen really many any, any issues. And like like Chief Jankerson uh, pointed out, the river is low, and that did help um, with the with the fact that the river to pair you know came up so quickly because it was dry a, a couple of days ago, and it came up so quickly, and now it's going down so so quickly. So it's it's actually helping us out. Regarding the subject that lost life? Yes. Yeah. So oh, that would be PD. PD. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you all.